Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and justice for all. Item number two will be the poll. Okay, item number three on the agenda is uh, public comments. We haven't received any public comments to this meeting, so we're going to move on to item four. Item four is reading of the notice of the meeting. Of the meeting. Okay. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place following meeting of the Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School District Committee will be conducted via remote participation. We will post an audio recording, audio video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of these proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting on the school's website and local cable access. Okay. The regular meeting of the Greater Beth Vocational Technical High School will be held Tuesday, March 9th at 6.30 p.m. Hey, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, item five is the reading and acceptance of the minutes of the February 5th meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Any uh, conversation on the minutes? Hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none opposed, so moved. Now we have to accept the minutes of the uh, executive board meeting. So move. Second. What will be held? We held a little determination of the uh, the items. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. We none opposed. Good. Okay. Uh, item six is reports. First one will be the bills. Second. Reflect on the bills. Hearing none, all those in favor of the bills, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed, so moved. Okay, item 6B it is um, principal, the parents' uh, communication. And that will be handled by Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Durgan. Uh, in your packets are the possible communication surveys that are conducted every other week. Um, parents, I just, uh, we don't normally point out some parent comments, so I thought today I'd draw your attention to the highlight quotes that were included at the bottom, so you'll see by each grade um, some parent quotes uh, regarding the school process, doing a great job in stressful times, uh, so far so good, online teaching has been successful, things of that nature, uh, both positive and negative, I reported on each report, as I've mentioned at other times. Uh, Sharon Pino's done really awesome work for us uh, in the library, calling back any parents who have left questions. Uh, we'll continue to do that for the duration of the year uh, and have uh, the respective departments that the questions are sent to respond to those questions. So that certainly helped in getting some of this feedback to be uh, as it is. We continue to be, you know, upwards of 80 and 90 percent, um, mostly or very satisfied with the work that the school has done. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions on the communications uh, with the parents? Hearing none, can I get a motion to accept uh, Mr. Watson's report? Mm -hmm. Seconded by. Second. Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Signify. Any opposed? So moved. Okay, item 6C is the attendance report, which will be handled by the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Derrigan. In your packet this evening is the uh, attendance report from February 1st through February 26th. Um, 
in that packet spells out the the absences in the attendance report from teachers both in the academic and vocational side along with teaching assistants clerical staff and custodial administration and so forth um, i don't know if anyone the totals are on page two uh, things have been moving forward in the positive direction for us with uh, attendance and quarantine for students and the faculty. I don't know if any school committee member has a question on this. Just a small one. It was Friday. It's a popular day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. I just was looking at the numbers. It seems like Friday uh, uh, seems to be a higher number. I went through the whole month. And uh, that's the highest day of the week for the whole month of February. I just want to bring that up. I just happened to notice that. It's a, it's a point well taken. Uh, I, I continually speak with both uh, Pam Smith from HR, Pam Stewart, and the two principals, and continuing to put our best foot forward by making use of teaching assistance and all to our substitute teachers that we have. Any other questions on the attendance report? Mr. Mr. Frank, how, how far off are we from, say, a normal school year with, with the amount of absences now? Substantially higher, would you say? Mike. Yeah, I, I think things are settling a little bit. There were 22 people out today, I want to say. Uh, we were able to cover it. I mean, there have definitely been points where we've been high. Um, we're managing right now um, pretty, pretty well. We have two long-term subs that are in the building three days a week, uh, teaching assistants that are filling in in classrooms. Um, things are getting better. The vaccinations are happening. Teachers are certainly reporting that they're signing up. Uh, so all of that is moving in, in, a, in a positive direction. Uh, we're obviously cognizant of some of the folks who've been vaccinated, right, and the uh, effects of a second dose uh, the Johnson & Johnson dose is now in Massachusetts and being administered. Um, some folks have felt some effects of that, too. So uh, that's something we're going to need to keep our eye on over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I would answer that question by saying there have been moments where it's been high, um, but I, I feel like we're in a decent place right now. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, just a question that may through Mike or Bob or Jim. Um, I've been working in a local school in the area, so I had a chance to talk to a few of the teachers when I was mentoring. Um, it seems like the teachers that I had talked to are very excited about getting the shot. You know, I, I see national news, and it's like they don't want it, they don't want to be in. How's the feeling here? And, and I know you haven't asked everybody, but I was kind of you know, pretty good when I was in that school earlier today that people had it, they're thrilled to have it. They, can't wait to go forward. Is that the intent? Do you see that in our school? Yeah, I, I think there's definitely a trend towards uh, getting vaccinated yeah. uh, rather than the other way. I'm sure there are folks that are not planning to get the shot, um, but I, all signals, and we'll talk about this shortly, all signals from the department um, doesn't affect us elementary students returning full in person April 5th. There's additional guidance was released today regarding middle schools that will be public on the department's website tonight well as uh, notification that high schools will be moving in that direction. All, all signs are pointing towards that coming back. So that certainly is, is, in my opinion anyway, is not a coincidence, right? It's based upon teachers being able to get vaccinated, vaccinations increasing in Massachusetts, uh, the number percentage of people who have indicated they will be vaccinated. All of that is likely matching up with the timeline from the department. So I, I think the answer is yes. Things are trending where folks are going to get vaccinated. Uh, as soon as possible. That's good to hear. Thank you. Mr. Sharon, your point, we believe that the faculty does want the, uh, the vaccine. And, and I've been very careful of how much information I speak with the faculty and staff, not to give them a false hope. But I will say to this school committee tonight, to the question, I've exhausted every avenue, especially in the last three months, to offer this institution and some of the nursing staff to have an on-site vaccination clinic. And working with South Coast Hospital Group, uh, Hawthorne Medical, uh, Community Health Foundation downtown, 
along with the Department of Public Health. It's not that the offer goes on deaf ears, it's supply and demand. Uh, sometimes South Coast Hospital Group might farm out uh, a small vaccination site at the Liberal Club in Fall River. They're not able to do it because they don't have enough, enough of the vaccines, whether it's Johnson or Johnson or Pfizer or so forth. But we've been certainly put on the list. Um, I work with especially the colleagues of South Coast Hospital Group because we have a tremendous relationship with them with how many students that are there on internships and co-op. And um, I'm a phone call away for them having the possibility of having maybe the mobile site company. And what we're working with the Department of Public Health to make sure we inform the faculty and staff, staff of whether it's Walgreens, CVS, Fall River, and so forth, but to assist them to try to get set. <coughs> Thank you. Are there any other questions on the attendance report? Hearing none, can I get a motion to accept and place on file? I, I didn't see the attendance report. Motion to accept the report. Second. All in favor, please signify. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any none opposed? So moved. We go down to 6D, which is the Artisan Report. Superintendent O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Durgan. Uh, first off, not in your paperwork this evening, but I, I had a short discuss, discussion with PM Stewart uh, before this meeting. Um, I would like to have a moment of silence for everyone in this country and in the world who experienced heartache. Uh, quite frankly, March 10th for us is the first day already a year ago that we had to begin conversations as a school to come up with plans of closure in the health and safety of our students. I would like to like conduct that. No, fine. Now, with regards to the Addison report, um, we small we run a small city and town here. Many different faces, many different students and faculty and staff with different beliefs. But we have a, we have a tremendous working team to make sure that this small city and town, that the health and safety of not only the students, but the faculty and staff are safe. Uh, we, are, we are proud of what we put forth uh, due to the support of the school committee. We've been fiscally solvent to support our budget, not only last year, but moving forward to the institution going. So we're providing the students the best education possible. And quite frankly, the entire faculty and staff in uh, facility and maintenance people employed. Mr. Walker and I had the opportunity today, which was a breath of fresh air in this beautiful day, to actually see what our vocational students are all about. Uh, we met up with um, Mr. Toomey at the Siemens Bethel, uh, Frank Gonzalez, Mike Richards, and our great students were working on a restoration project there. It's been a long time coming. Uh, back home on campus, I was able to uh, go out and visit Chris Perry and our tremendous carpentry junior class who are uh, building uh, the equipment storage shed out on the, on the, on the track, which abuts the little softball field. But another positive note with regards to student activities, it was a breath of fresh air to drive up this evening and walk out on the football field and introduce myself to our, our uh, head soccer coach and also in the far distance to see our football team practicing. Uh, ending the winter season just after the last school committee meeting, I was fortunate enough to see our boys basketball team uh, win in the tournament, uh, lose, school, uh, lose in the tournament against Dighton or Hobbeth, but Jeff Wildrick, in that uh, boys basketball team went far beyond the expectations there. We're working continuously with MAVA and other organizations with our reopening uh, plans and our next phases as we adhere to CDC, the commissioner and guidelines which Principal Watson, Principal Watson will speak with the rest of our, our report. Tomorrow we start our budget subcommittee meetings 
with the school committee budget committee for next year's budget. And uh, we'll turn it over to Mr. Watt. Okay. Okay, so the Academy D did a great job celebrating Black History Month by recognizing important figures who made a positive impact in each of the career and technical areas. In business technology, Jen Ferrero, a business related instructor, was recognized for her outstanding support of junior achievement. Jennifer was organized more than 20 job shadowing experiences for her students over the last four years. Collegiate technology students are extremely busy learning the finer points of card detailing. If you're interested in having your car professionally detailed, a lot of service requests get on the list. It'll be the best $10 you ever spent. Diesel technology program continues their maintenance and repair of school vehicles through a regular preventive maintenance program established by Mr. Maniz two years ago. This has saved the district thousands of dollars by preventing costly breakdowns. Fashion design students, uh, two seniors, Autumn D'Souza and Kiara Marin, have been preparing for the annual YMWCA Red Dress Fashion Show. Fashion Show is a fundraiser to bring awareness to heart disease in women. The show was virtual this year, was filmed earlier this month because of COVID-19. Not part of the Artisan Report, but the Skills USA District Competition. We brought in 64 students to participate in District Skills USA competition on Friday, February 26th, to complete, completely remote. The event went off seamlessly with the help of advisors, Lori Russell Pelsu and Megan Lacasse, the IT department, Academy Administrators and Skills USA Progress. The results are one state officer, Cara Costa, five gold medalists, Max Soares and Cabinet Macon, Angelie Santiago, CNC Turning Specialist, Casey Dean, first aid CPR, Chelsea Martinez, medical math, and Faith Amrall, restaurant service. We had seven silver medalists Abigail Souza, basic healthcare, Caitlin Trembley, CNC training specialist, Dominic Santos, criminal justice, Scott Sanders, diesel equipment technology, Michaela Ferrara, early childhood education. Evan Kenzul, Power Equipment Technology, Alex Watts, Welding Sculpture. We also had 10 bronze medalists. Benjamin Farman, Additive Manufacturing, Ryan Ferreira, Additive Manufacturing, Johanna Birch, Customer Service, J.D. Bousquet, Digital Cinema, Eli Durden, Digital Cinema, Jacob Rimmels, Green Service Technology, Jenna Medeiros, Medical Assistant, Paula De Silva, Sheet Metal, Christopher Pereira, Urban Search and Rescue, Cody Raposa, Urban Search and Rescue. We had two qualifiers that were non medalists Jordan Mello, Green Service Technology, and Luke Porto, Green Service Technology. We're extremely proud of the accomplishments. 36% of all the students that participated went home with a medal. And we're looking forward to attending the state competition with 45 students from April 12th to May 4th, 2021. Now the numbers were certainly lower this year than usual, but it still was a great uh, turnout and the kids did extremely well. Thank you, Mr. Watt. Any questions? Okay. Have a question? Yes. Mr. Walworth, yeah. are they going to be holding a state competition this year? Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's spread out over quite a few days, because they're going to stagger the competitions. Uh, we can't have it all at once, but as things are starting to get a little more freer, we may be able to do that, and maybe even a national one. But right now, we usually host the districts since Mr. Shea's time, and we weren't able to do that this year, but everyone did do it remotely. Then I'll go ask about again. Yes. Any other questions from the board? Uh, I just, it's just a comment. I was really impressed with this artisan's request, especially for Black History Month. Mm -hmm. um, were, were these people all found by the students themselves or were they put in here? As a, I, I think it was part of some research by the students, but also um, I know Mr. Shepard was involved in, in the process. 
And I, I, I agree with you. It was nice to showcase the people that made a, a significant difference in the areas, yeah, like the spot plug and all of that. Stuff. It, was, it was interesting because uh, I've never seen it before, and it was a very good job. So I okay. commend them for that. Thank you. I'm sure he's on, but I'll let him know. Any other questions on 16? Uh, Mr. Walker, do the academic. So real quick on the academic piece, uh, in your packets, uh, the math department um, has provided the released SAT scores, uh, which just came out um, in the last month or so. Uh, those numbers, again, just some trend data points, just so I can commend the work the AP teachers have done uh, and teachers have done in preparation for SAT. You'll notice over the last four years, uh, SAT scores range from an average of five, uh, 492 to 502. Uh, and in the five preceding years, uh, we had scores that range from 422 to 447. So one year doesn't ever make a trend for anything, but four consecutive years, uh, average SAT scores up near 500, um, a good 50 points ahead of what they were in the four preceding years is a strong indication that um, the math program has uh, really developed, really grown, and is helping to get kids ready uh, for SATs. And I just think that's an important point to make. I'd also highlight, uh, as in your packet as well, um, African American students on their SATs uh, increased their score, their average score by 11 points from all time high of 484. So uh, the progress is not being isolated, it's being spread across all groups and all student subgroups. Um, and I think that's worthy of note uh, for us here. Um, the English department is reporting, uh, as the math department is doing as well, uh, we are gearing up for grade 10 and 11 MCAS assessments, which is posing a number of logistical challenges that we haven't faced before because this year. Um, we have to respond to testing two different grades, um, 10th and 11th. Those 11th graders last year were not in school. Last year, when the, when the closure the closure prevented them from being able to take the assessments, and at this point, uh, the state is moving forward with the requirement that both grades will, will test. So they are both taking the next generation MCAS assessments in May, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, but I wanted you to be aware of that that, that is on the horizon as well. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Mr. Chair, before you move on to the next item, I, I did want to make a point to this committee that uh, I want to put these two dates down because we've made some adjustments with regards to some of the senior activities for our graduation and so forth. Uh, graduation is still landlocked for June 4th, which is a Friday, at minimum. At minimum, graduation will be what it was last year, and we will build upon that game plan with working with the Department of Public Health and Ryan Nobreger and his team and Zeva Ruder and our staff here. There will be more information to follow there. Uh, the other area would be June 2nd. Um, the graduation committee and the principal to myself, we're going to make adjustments to senior awards where we cannot um, all the capacity in the auditorium. The location will to be determined. Uh, this senior class especially needs to be recognized for their efforts in these adverse times. The senior awards night will be held in second, whether it's on site or off school grounds. More information will follow. Uh, lastly, we're working uh, with the uh, senior class advisors and the administrative team uh, principals and with all the, what other schools are doing, trying to uh, be as flexible in understanding to the seniors wants, desires, and what we can actually uh, put forth for our activities. Any questions? Can I get a motion to accept the 6D Artisan Report? Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 None opposed. So moved. Item 6E, our student representative, Ethan Mori. Hello. Uh, okay, so it's been uh, pretty busy last month. Uh, so to begin, uh, as we near towards the end of the year, uh, a lot of all four classes have been working on fundraisers or any events that they would have or take place that for next year or at the end of this year. So to begin with that, the freshman class of 2024 uh, just had a fundraiser uh, in which you buy raffle tickets in order to win a gift basket. Uh, that was the Wilton Center. It was 
on this participation on students end. Uh, the sophomore class of 2023 are currently holding a fundraiser uh, taking place from March 2nd until April uh, 3rd. Um, the advisors, Ms. Martin and Mrs. Baptiste, have set up a store through needersupport.org uh, in which students, faculty can buy things to support that class. Uh, on February 28th, the junior class uh, 2022 uh, held a fundraiser at Tropical Smoothie, in which they had a day where anybody that goes and shows the flyer, they get 50% of the order put to the class budget. Um, we have set a date uh, for the helping of food drive at the church. Uh, it's going to be April 22nd, and a group of USA officers, uh, participants, and a uh, group of student council members are going to go and help organize and set up and send meals out to families in need throughout the community. Uh, and then finally, uh, the Skills USA Community Action Project has started. Uh, it is being held in the Welcome Center and it is a toy drive collection. Uh, and they are collecting fidget toys like Rubik's Cubes, fidget spinners, things like that. Uh, and then what they're going to do with the collection is they're going to go and donate to elementary schools to help students that are struggling with this year, that have stress due to this year and the conditions, and they're gonna go around and give to the students in need. That's our month. Any questions for Ethan's report? Uh, the only comment I'll have is, how does a Rubik's Cube release stress? That thing drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm 68 years old, I haven't done it yet. Kids have patience. <laughs> Any other questions? Hearing none, can I get a motion to accept Ethan's report? So moved. Can I get a second? second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Are you not opposed? So moved. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm gonna... Item seven, which is new business. Item seven A, which is so on, oh, I'm sorry, student reentry program. That would be Mr. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Durgan. Um, so, as you are aware, all sophomores, juniors, and seniors have returned for full in person CBT instruction. Uh, freshman students remain on green and gold cohorts for their CBT uh, learning. Uh, beginning Thursday, on March 11th, we are going to begin to bring some students back in uh, for support, additional students for support uh, in academic classes. Uh, that is a first step in returning some students for live academic instruction work. Those students have been identified as at-risk students. Uh, they will be coming into the, into the school building to receive some additional support to try to help improve some of their outcomes. Uh, on March 29th, we will return to traditional six period rotating academic schedule. Uh, it will still be conducted largely remotely, uh, but we will get kids back into the experience of having all six classes every single day, starting at 7.40 in the morning to 2.31. And all of that is with the hope that at some point in the near future, we'll be reporting to the committee that we will return uh, towards a full in-person experience at the direction of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. So Brian uh, received guidance today, shared it with me. Um, there has been a document released on elementary schools and middle schools now with target dates. We are expecting information from the commissioner in April, uh, which will guide high schools. Uh, they have assured us there would be at least a two week notification period, but strongly encourage districts to begin planning uh, for that. So we undertook some conversations today with the facility engineer this afternoon, as well as myself, Mr. Watt, Ms. Stewart, and the uh, assistant principals, um, and we are beginning to plan uh, for any directive that comes uh, from the state next month. That's just uh, an update as to where we are at the moment. Any questions for Mr. Watson on uh, 6A, 7A, rather? Hmm? Hearing none, all those in favor? All the way. Uh, I need a motion to accept this report. Motion to accept report. Second. Second. Bye. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none opposed, so moved. Okay, Mr. Watson, don't go away because you've got 7B. Yes. On the end cast. 
The MCAS testing window is May 4th to June 4th. As I mentioned a few moments ago, we are going to be testing 10th and 11th grade students this year. That is not an option. That is a requirement from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Uh, we had done some preliminary planning to minimize uh, testing days to avoid disruption in classes with today's uh, report from the uh, commissioner. We are reconsidering whether we want to do this in eight days or 16 days based upon um, student reentry. Obviously, if there are going to be large numbers of students back in the building for in person learning, we're going to need to not use 58 testing rooms, which what would have been required under a remote atmosphere and cut that down to more of the traditional 25 to 30. So, our plan is very much uh, fluid. The good news is we've done a lot of prep work. Um, Sue Demers has been uh, very helpful with Elder Angelo in helping to lead that. So it's been a, a large number of, of prep work that's been done, large amount of prep work that has been done. Um, our goal, our plan is as we get additional information from the state, we may need to shift uh, what that testing window looks like to ensure that instruction happens for all other grades that are not tested at that time. The current thought is we would test 11th graders one time and then 10th graders, not mix the two grades uh, together. But we can provide an update in, in April uh, as that information is released from the commission. Any questions on the MCAS, Mr. Watson? <clears throat> and then can we get a motion to accept and place on file and report? Motion to accept. Second and five. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none opposed, so move. We're going to go on to 7C, and that's going to be Mr. Watson again with his superintendent's transition plan. I wanted to uh, publicly update the committee as well as uh, anyone who's watching on uh, where we are with the transition, my role from academic principal to superintendent in July. Um, I did uh, and I do appreciate the time that each of you spent with me over the last several weeks uh, in our one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, which is where I began. Um, I would advise today that over the next two and a half weeks, I am scheduling two sessions per day outside of the budget subcommittee days tomorrow and Thursday to meet one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the administrative staff here. I have met with four administrators so far, and we'll resume that on Friday and continue through March 24th, meeting with each administrator one-on-one uh, -on -one for 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, Mrs. Fredette has been very helpful uh, in getting the letters ready for community members. Um, we wrote those a couple of weeks ago. They'll be dropped in the mail by the end of this week. They will go to uh, town administrators, the mayor, school committees, select boards of the towns of Fairhaven and Dartmouth, as well as the city of New Bedford. Uh, we're going to give them a couple of weeks to receive those letters, digest those letters. Um, I can provide a copy to the school committee uh, in your packet if they haven't received it. This is for that. We can send that to them. Um, we will then follow that up at the end of the month as the administrative sessions are uh, wrapping up. And this is for that. We'll reach out to those folks and I will offer to meet with them. Um, on their turf, in their place, in small groups, one-on-one, -on -one, however they deem it appropriate, um, so that we can engage uh, those folks in, 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 in this work as well. Um, as that process unfolds, well, April will be also afforded, uh, afforded to teachers, teaching assistants, um, and, and, and secretarial staff uh, at the school district. So the plan is over the next several months to listen and engage um, community stakeholders uh, as we transition the role of superintendent. Okay, any questions for Mr. Watson? Hearing none, can I get a motion in a second? Motion. Second. All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? And opposed? So move. Oh, Mr. Watson, you're a busy guy because you're also going to do the fall two sports. This will be an easy one. So the fall two uh, season is officially underway. Football started last Wednesday. Uh, all other fall two sports, uh, volleyball, uh, boys and girls soccer, those are off, those are off the ground today. Uh, well, this week, Monday, uh, tryouts and things are, are underway. So uh, we're excited. We, we, we managed to get through the winter season. As Mr. O'Brien mentioned in his remarks earlier, it's encouraging to see kids out on the field, uh, trying to engage in that, in that high school experience. We're working with kids uh, to make sure that they're keeping their grades up and, and all of the things that are normally part of the high school experience. Uh, we're hoping to get back to some semblance of normal. And so we're, we feel like we're turning the corner and uh, we're optimistic that the fall two season will be uh, even much improved from the winter season. Any questions on that? 
Maybe none. Motion to accept this report and place on file. Motion to accept report. Motion. Motion. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Are none opposed? So moved. Um, okay, we're going to do item E, which is a vote to declare uh, surplus equipment. Uh, Mrs. Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the listing that you received is for two items that are 20 plus years old uh, EKG machines that were located in a closet um, and are obviously deemed, I not say ineligible, but not in working condition for what the time is that they need it now. Um, Mr. Lucio was not 100% sure if they are in working condition, uh, but he wants to put them on the surplus list so that they can be utilized by someone who possibly parts. The questions on. Is there any motion for all Seconded by. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Are you none opposed? So moved. Yes. On either way, I can speak on community. Okay, on to item eight. Now we're going to have communications, and Superintendent O'Brien will speak on that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as part of our communication, not only to the community, but to the student body, faculty, staff, and the family and friends, um, I'd like to turn this over to our IT, IT director, uh, Marcial Pius, who's been working on this initiative. Marcial? So, Brian, um, just want to let the committee know that uh, the PR team along with the media technology students have been working on refreshing the website. Uh, we're taking an approach to support incoming, incoming freshmen and improve the admissions uh, of our school. So <clears throat> we recently, we, today we actually just published our new promo video. And the theme is, can you ever be too prepared to graduate from high school? We don't think so. So we're asking, you know, the community, the community members to visit our website and take a look at the new promotional video. Um, and in this promo video, you'll see what uh, New Bedford Vogue is all about, you know, what, what we have to offer students and the community. So also another thing that we've been working on is a 360 virtual tour of our school. So we didn't have a open house, but we were planning on showcasing what we have to offer inside. So with a virtual tour, it opens up a YouTube video and you can use your phone or if you're on a desktop, laptop, you can click and drag as you can uh, see Mr. Perry speak on behalf of uh, the school and the area that he's uh, talking about. You can kind of even move the screen around and actually look around the school yourself uh, to see what it's all about. It's been in the works for a couple of months, but um, it's definitely you know, the students in media technology did a fantastic job with the uh, with a little bit of a refresh of the website. We have the latest news. Uh, the principal letter is always on the website. Academics uh, and student work. Yes. Yeah, I, I can. I'll I'll bring up the virtual tour. I'm just not sure how it's going to. Uh, how it's going to be seen uh, from viewers at home. But... Hi, welcome to Greater New Bedford Middle Vocational Technical High School. I'm Greg Perry, and this is a 3D video immersive experience designed to let you see a little bit about who we are. This is the GMB VocTech Welcome Center. One of the first things you'll notice when you walk in is that you'll be met by our in-house security team asked to sign in so that we know who's here in our building at all times. One of the very unique things in our welcome center that you'll notice are a display of flags representing all of the various countries and cultures that make up our communities of New Bedford, Dartmouth, and Clear Haven. We take great pride in the diversity of our communities, and this is a tribute to that. Also off the Welcome Center is our main office, our business office, and our attendance office. But we should also note that 97% of our students are here in school every day. Upstairs will be our state-of-the-art classrooms, our advanced placement centers, 
and our cutting edge labs for physical and biology sciences. We also have many career and technical education courses there as well, and of course, our library. Also, off the Welcome Center is our Mackinac Court. And it can be used for our adult education classes as well. This space is designed to promote a conscious culture of good health for our students, our athletic teams, and our faculty. As a reminder, this is a 3D immersive video. Feel free to scroll around at any point in time and check out other parts of Great New Bedford Book Deck. We're currently inside the Z. Walter Janiak Fieldhouse here at Greater New Bedford Book Deck, home to the Bears. This field house seats over 2,000 people and offers a host of athletic opportunities for girls and boys. Here at Vote Tech, we have over 30 athletic teams, a variety of sports and levels, from freshman to JV. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted you to get a bit of what we have moving forward. And I think Marcial and his faculty and staff, PR team, we've worked on this initiative. Does any member have any questions? Mr. Conrad, I think that's a, a great promotion to you for this group. Really good job. That was the intention of, um, again, just showcasing what we have to offer. It's all the hard work that teachers have been doing all these years. And it also, we want to educate incoming students why, you know, New Bedford Vogue. So with the promotional video, again, that's, you know, when you have, when you have an opportunity, please watch the promotional video because it put a lot of time into it. So, so it's a good showcase of what we do. And part of the evidence that we see as a school, we ask and through other venues and we're working with Desi, uh, there are many middle school terms students from a diverse population that don't know enough about this school. And this evidence to, to Desi, to the Board of Education that we're doing our part, try to solve the problem of the lack of access into the middle school system from Fahaven, New Bedford, and Diamond, but getting to those parents and guardians and students that don't know enough about our school. Uh, we needed to be pro proactive uh, with Dr. Larkin and her team, and we needed to do a direct mail of this year proactively because it's been very difficult um, with the number of applications for this year's freshman class due to the pandemic and COVID situation. Okay, along with the under-communications, we have one item the uh, donation from South Coast Hospital Group. Would someone like to speak? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Joanne Romanelli, an Academy B the Academy B, they received uh, expired health care jobs from South Coast Hospital Group. We would like the committee to acknowledge this donation so that the superintendent can send a thank you letter um, so that the students can begin to use these cultures to um, continue their curriculum. Absolutely, Mrs. Stewart. Um, okay, so that wraps up. Um, okay, second. Second. Okay. All in favor of writing the letter to South Coast Hospital Group can signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none opposed, so moved. Okay, we'll drop down to item nine, which is uh, the discussion. Hearing none, we'll go down to item 10, which is any other business on the school board. Hearing none, we'll go on to item 11, which is the executive session under section 30, sorry, chapter 30, section 21. And we'll be discussing the um, negotiations with non union and union personnel. We will be coming back to open session after. So, not be adjourned the meeting, but we do have a roll call. Mr. Toomey? Yes. Attorney Walsh? Yes. Mr. Shadd? Yes. Mr. Oliveira? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Lee? 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 Yes. Mr.
Yes. Dr. Marlin? Yes. Dr. Morgan? Yes. 